Very excited to be here this afternoon to share with you a little more about the transformation that Singapore Post has been going through and quite honestly is still going through. So Singapore Post is a 150-year-old company, so fairly old, and obviously had its roots in the mail business. You know, and the mail business has provided for the very, very longest time very reliable and profitable revenue streams. Up until, you know, before actually many people even heard about the term digital disruption, this thing called email came along. And no, I can't even remember the last time I actually hand wrote uh, a letter. Probably was maybe at my wedding, which was very, very long ago, um, up until actually I posted actual letters. So definitely not a very exciting space for any business to be in. To make things a little worse, you know, Singapore Post was listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange and privatized in 2003. And I've yet to find an investor that is really excited about investing in a business model that's going to disappear. So obviously, tremendous pressure to actually reinvent ourselves. You know, there's no doubt that it was really, really quite a lot of big challenges. The very good news was that our board was very, very foresightful and started diversifying the business very, very aggressively. So they first started with financial services and retail, um, then logistics, where they built a full logistics network all across Asia Pacific, you know, from Australia in the south, New Zealand to Japan in the north and India in the east and pretty much everywhere in the middle. And they've also built warehouses that could actually support the logistics growth. And then last but not least, and we only started that very recently in 2012, uh, we embarked on e-commerce. So, and, and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about, you know, because it's not the most natural thing for a nat national postal provider to become an e-commerce company. So before we started, we looked at, well, what is actually required to run an e-commerce business? So we looked at all the six core functions that are required to run an e-commerce business. The first thing, obviously, is the e-commerce technology. So that's your websites, that's your mobile experience, that's all the systems that are required to effectively transact online. You know, and that includes fraud, payments, literally everything there. Um, then once you have that website, well, you need to drive traffic to it, and that's not that straightforward. So you need to be an expert in digital marketing and marketing in order to drive traffic to that site or mobile experience. Well, um, if you're trying to sell something online, at least in Asia and especially in Southeast Asia, people usually place a call or chat before they actually place an order. So you need to have a customer care center uh, for customers to call you or to ask some questions about the product they're selling. Um, then warehousing and fulfillment, you know, once you receive an order, you better pack and pick it, uh, pick and pack it, um, and then actually give it to a logistics provider to send it out very quickly. Um, last mile delivery, also rather essential. And last but not least, merchandising and store operations. You know, without good products, you know, nobody's really going to buy anything on your site or in your e-commerce business. So we looked at all of that and looked at, well, what does Singapore Post even have to start with? So there was actually a couple of good news. You know, we had a lot of the warehouses that have been used by traditional catalog suppliers, which was good because that's very, very capex intensive, so we didn't have to reinvent the wheel there. We had a delivery and returns network, um, which in Southeast Asia and Asia Pacific isn't quite a, a standard product like it is in the US and Europe, so that was actually a competitive advantage, and we were able to leverage all of our traditional postal relationships um, to really make that much stronger and cost effective. And a little bit of surprise after we did some more research, we had a lot of customer data. So we had a lot of customer data and we knew what actual people are interested in um, and what they want to buy. So we could actually email to them um, if we had any specific offers. What we didn't have at all was an e-commerce technology or an e-commerce platform where we actually had absolutely no clue about that. We actually also did have some customer care capabilities, but they were mostly used internal. Uh, so not really uh, something that could be easily used for an e-commerce business, but at least a good starting point. The warehouses we had, delivery I mentioned, we had that, and merchandising and store management, no, we didn't really have a whole lot there. You know, when you, when you don't have a lot of things in a business, but you have some portions, well, where do you start? So we started with one thing which we thought was the most important thing, which was actually the people. Um, so we started looking who are experts in e-commerce and for which companies would they actually want to work for. I don't think they would naturally actually want to work for a post office. So we had to create a very, very different environment. So we set up an office um, a block and a half away from the core uh, corporate headquarters and set up something that looks very, very different from the traditional postal offices. You know, our, our previous offices at SingPost looked kind of like out oh, of a movie office space, the one in the basement there, which looked extremely horrible. Um, we would have not been able to really hire a lot of startup-oriented guys into that team. So we were able to successfully set up a um, startup-looking business, or a startup-looking office, 
um, that attracted then um, all other talented people. And you know, you, you might be surprised by how much difference the physical appearance of an office can actually have. Um, we're also able to actually attract a lot of the existing SingPost employees into that office and excite them uh, about the journey. So once we actually had the team in place, you know, you still need to figure out what are you actually going to do in e-commerce? Because you know, there's many, many, many different business models or ways um, that you can operate. So we started out with the luxury and fashion business. Um, we started selling Hermes handbags and a lot of other luxury things. And surprisingly or not, um, you know, we actually sold quite a bit of it. So we sold bags for more than $80,000 online, which I would have never believed. Um, the challenge, however, with that business model was it was actually competing with a lot of our customers that are using us on the logistics side because they were worried that we might use their customer data and then use it for our own purposes. So we stopped that business. Fortunately, we were able to sell it, uh, but we discontinued that. Then we started a marketplace where we wanted to enable all the customers that would warehouse with us and all the customers that would ship with us that they could list their products. Um, we started that um, almost about two years ago, but we fairly quickly learned that it is very expensive to drive traffic to a marketplace, especially if it's a broad range of, of products that isn't quite coherent. Um, and you know, it was very difficult to, to compete with very well-funded businesses that had lots of money to, to, to invest in traffic, but also have lots of money to invest in promotions to make the products really cheap and get a lot of buyers. So we kind of gave up on that part too. Um, but what we've learned uh, through the two ab above experiences is really to set up e-commerce businesses. So we started becoming an e-commerce enabler um, and started setting up e-commerce sites and businesses for other companies. So if you go, for example, today to the Adidas site here in Singapore, or if you do the same thing in Malaysia, do the same thing in Philippines or anywhere else in Southeast Asia, you will see that that site is actually run by us. So we run everything on that customer experience for Adidas, from the website, to the call center, to the digital marketing, to the warehouse, to the delivery, to uploading all the products, even to some extent for the photo shoots. And by now we have about a thousand clients on our platform. So we do that for quite a lot of companies. So for example, if you go to Muji here in Singapore, if you go to a lot of sites in Australia and Korea, and most likely you actually are shopping on a site supported by Singapore Post. Um, <coughs> the, the big advantage that we had is that we were able to actually not having to rely on anything legacy. So we could actually reinvent everything from scratch and we were obviously on the latest and greatest technology. Um, we were even recently named as one of the leading e-commerce enablers by Forrester Research, um, which made us really proud and obviously is helping us get more clients. So that, that transformation story, you know, and we're still in the beginning you know, because e-commerce is still not a, a very big part of Singapore Post yet, you know, but it, it made us, it inspired the entire rest of the organization to really jump in and to help the, organ, or help the team to grow the e-commerce business. If I can summarize the, the, the three main learnings uh, that, we've, uh, that we've got through while we went through this transformation, you know, there's, there's probably the first thing is the most important thing, you know, that don't try to overanalyze your business cases. You know, action always trumps any business plan or spreadsheet. Um, it's probably always good to analyze whatever you want to do for a month, maybe two, and really be sure that you want to invest money in that. But don't do that for a year or two because the competition is going to outrun you and be much, much faster than you could ever be. You know, in today's, today's cloud technologies, it's not that expensive to actually start a site and start a business model. And if it doesn't work, you better fail fast and start to do something else. But important that you actually can learn from it so you don't do the same mistake again. So um, we, we started multiple things. You've seen some of the three um, earlier, but we actually started quite a lot more uh, that actually failed. Too embarrassed to actually mention those, um, at least hindsight. But it was very good that we actually tried multiple things because one of them actually worked out really well. Then the second thing is to really start with the people, you know, because without, without the people that are kind of execute your plan um, or execute the strategy that actually works for you, you're not going to get very far. And then listen to your customers because the customers that you have are the ones that will guide you towards what, what you need to do. So if you can find customers and can satisfy their needs and can make a profit margin while you do that, you know, you're probably on the right track. And you should continuously listen to your customers. So initially we started just out with Southeast Asia. Then we had customers that told us, well, can you help us in Australia? Can you help us in Korea? You know, that, that helped us literally just by going with what the customer wanted to expanding the business and our footprint. And then last but not least, make sure that you actually leverage some of your strengths. 
So while it didn't look on the surface that Singapore Post was set up as an e-commerce company or had a lot of strengths, um, and the one thing I, I, I now know that I remember on the first slide there was the six components, you know, all of these six components have to be combined by very good execution and operational excellence. And that's one thing that a mail provider definitely has. You know, they know really well how to execute and operate a business in a very lean and specific way. You know, Singapore Post is delivering three million items every single day. And you know, the failure rate is very, very, very small. So one thing that Singapore Post was traditionally always good at is making sure that things actually work from our operations capability, which also obviously helped us quite a bit. So don't try to do something entirely new if you don't have any small piece of, 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 of expertise in that. Um, so with, with these three things, um, I think we've been fairly successful, obviously by far not there, um, but this is just a very quick summary of what we've went through. Thank you.